Hey, what's up guys, Exalted here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to optimize your PC's network and latency speeds. This is going to be the most extensive guide on YouTube, and I guarantee you by the end of this video, your ping in any game that you play will be significantly lower, and your computer's internet speeds will be as fast as we can get your computer to process it. Any tweaker out there that requires you to pay money for a service, I guarantee you their tips are in this video right here for free, because this guide consists of 51 different tweaks. There are pretty much no other tweaks you can even make on a PC that will optimize your network speeds even more. Now because there are so many tweaks, I'm going to be laying out every single section and every single resource you could possibly need in a very organized fashion in the description below, that way it is as easy as possible for you to accomplish and understand what's going on. Tweakers shouldn't be charging for this information, I do think everybody should have this for free, and if you agree, hit the like button. I know a ton about PC optimization. So if you would like more optimization videos in the future, let me know in the comments and I will definitely do it if this video gets enough likes. So with that being said, let's get straight into the optimizing. For step number one, we need to figure out what driver adapter brand our PCs are currently using so that we can go ahead and update them. To do so, click Windows key and R at the same time and you're going to type dev mgmt.msc. You're going to go ahead and go under network adapters right here and you can see for me, I've got Intel network adapters. Other network adapters you might have are gonna be Killer Networking, Realtek, or Broadcom. I'll have the update links in the description below, and I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do that. For Broadcom drivers, all you're gonna to do to download this is you're gonna scroll down, click the checkbox, click I agree, and then your download will start, and you're gonna go ahead and open it, run it, and go through the easy installation process. Next, for Killer drivers, you're gonna go ahead and go to this link. You're gonna find the driver that fits your system. It's probably going to be this one for 64 bit systems right here. You're then going to go ahead and click download and then go through the easy installation process. Finally, for Realtek drivers, you're just going to scroll down and click this here. Assuming you're on Windows 10, which I hope you are if you are using this guide, once you click this button, you're going to go ahead and just check I agree and then you're going to give them a fake email and then you're going to go ahead and solve their little security check. If they give you a math problem, go ahead and do the math problem correctly and don't copy and paste anything. Then proceed to install it to your computer. For Intel drivers, what you're going to do is you're gonna go ahead and download the zip here for 32-bit systems or here for 64-bit systems. Once you accept the terms, the download should begin. You can go ahead and drag it to your desktop and extract the files to your desktop. You're gonna go ahead and run the installation process like so. For me, it's gonna look a little different than yours, but when you get to this section, make sure these are unchecked. You only want to install the device drivers. Now that you've installed the latest drivers, we're gonna go ahead and get straight into the optimizing. What you're gonna do is you're gonna click the Windows key and I at the same time to bring out your settings. You're gonna click network and adapter settings. From here, you're gonna go to change adapter settings. And then me personally, because I use ethernet, I disable Wi-Fi. If you are using Wi-Fi, I highly suggest you use ethernet. Do anything and everything you possibly can, whether that's run a 100 foot ethernet cord to your router or run an outdoor version outside your window to your router. There are even plugs that you can use that boost the Wi-Fi signal that you can pull up directly into. Getting an ethernet port in your computer will allow you to do these optimizations and will drastically decrease your latency. With that being said, you can go ahead and disable Wi-Fi if you are not going to use it. Now, to continue on with our ethernet adapter, you're going to go ahead and right click it and click properties. You're then going to come down to internet protocol version 4 and double click it. You're going to go down to advanced and you're going to go up to wins and then you're going to uncheck enable LM hosts lookup and then you're going to change NetBIOS settings from default to disable. The only time you're ever going to want to use this is if your PC is working as a router and you're running an airport's worth of devices. You're going to click OK and OK to get out of that and then OK to finalize that. You're going to go back to the Ethernet settings and click properties once again and from there you're going to go and click configure. Here, you're gonna to go to the power management tab and you're gonna make sure both these boxes are unchecked. Once again, click OK and then go back to ethernet and click properties. Go back to configure once again and then go to the advanced tab. Now here is where the majority of our tweaking is gonna be. We're gonna go through every single setting here and I'm gonna show you how to optimize it for your computer specifically. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disable all energy efficient optimizations. 
Some users will have advanced EEE up here at the top. Make sure you go ahead and disable that. Some users will also have energy efficient ethernet. Go ahead and disable that as well. If you have gigabit light, disable that. And if you have green ethernet in these settings, disable that as well. Since I'm on an Intel router, I have link speed battery saver. I'm gonna go ahead and disable that. Disable reduce speed on power down. Next, go ahead and scroll down to system idle power saver and go ahead and disable that as well. Next, click on ultra low power mode, disable that. And then if you have a setting titled power saving mode, disable that. Then for wake on magic, you're gonna go ahead and disable this. For weight on link, you're gonna go ahead and disable this. For wake on pattern match, you're also gonna go ahead and disable this. And then some of you guys will have a WOL and shutdown link speed. Go ahead and set that to not speed down. Once you have finished those settings, go ahead and click okay, and it will reset your adapter and apply those settings. Now we're gonna go ahead and get into more advanced optimizations. Go ahead and right click your ethernet adapter. Once again, click properties click configure and go to the advanced tab and I'm going to go ahead and walk you through every single setting. For adaptive interframe spacing, disabled. For enable PME, disabled. Energy efficient, off. Flow control, disabled. Gigabit master slave mode, keep this on auto detect. Do not change that. Interrupt moderation, disabled. Interrupt moderation rate, off. For IPv4 checksum, we are going to come back to that later. For jumbo packet, make sure this is disabled. For large send offload, IPv4 and 6, we're gonna come back to these later. For legacy switch compatibility mode, this should be disabled. For link speed battery saver, this should be disabled. Don't touch this. Log link state should be enabled. Now for maximum number of RSS queues. Some PCs will allow more options than one and two. Select the highest one you can. Now only do this if you have a decent CPU. By changing this to the highest possible setting from where it's at, if it can go any higher for you, it will probably decrease your FPS by about 1-5% to in game. 1% if you have a very good CPU, about 5% if your CPU is slightly lacking. With that being said, packet priority in VLAN, we're going to go ahead and disable this. For protocol ARP offload, go ahead and disable this. And for protocol NS offload, go ahead and disable this. Some of you will have these settings up here on the top because it'll be ARP offload, NS offload, and it won't have protocol in front of it. They're pretty much the exact same thing. For PTP hardware timestamp, go ahead and keep this disabled. And then for receive buffers, we're going to go ahead and get to this a little bit later. For receive side scaling, go ahead and disable this and reduce speed on power down disabled. For RSS load balancing profile, go ahead and do closest processor, and for software timestamp, keep that disabled. Now for speed and duplex, you're gonna go ahead and do the highest full duplex option that you can. If you have 100 megabytes per second internet, you're gonna do 100 megabytes per second full duplex. If you have one gig internet, you're gonna do one gig full duplex. I have one gig, so I'm gonna be setting it to this. System idle power saver, make sure that's disabled. We're gonna get to TCP checksum offload four and six later. Transmit buffers we'll get to later. UDP offload, we'll get to those two later as well. And then for ultra low power mode, make sure this is disabled. Now for wait for link, make sure this is on auto detect. And like I said earlier, these three settings should also be disabled. Now we're gonna go ahead and get into the checksum offload settings. So this is gonna be this setting, these two settings right here, and then it's gonna be these four, or these four settings right here. So what these settings are gonna do is they're gonna take all the network processes and they're actually, if you disable them, they're gonna go ahead and run them on your CPU. Now the benefits to this is most of the time your CPU is much quicker and much stronger than your router or modem is, meaning it can go ahead and solve these processes much quicker. This will definitely reduce your ping, but it does come at the cost of FPS because it is requiring slightly more resources from your CPU. If you have a very strong CPU, definitely go ahead and do this. If you don't have a strong CPU, definitely try it. If it does not work or reduces your frames or is making you stutter in any way, just go ahead and turn them right back off. Now, if you have a router specified for gaming with QoS, which stands for quality of service options enabled, do not disable these. 
So with that being said, we are going to go ahead and disable all of these settings right here. So that includes IPv4 checksum offload, large send offload IPv4, large send offload IPv6. Then we're going to scroll down TCP checksum offload IPv4, then the same one for IPv6. We're going to disable both of those, then do the same for the UDP offloads. And like I said, just try these out. It'll help a ton if your PC can handle it. If your CPU can't handle it or you have a really good network router, go ahead and just keep them enabled. So now right here on the screen, I'm going to go ahead and just show you all the settings that will affect your CPU. That way, if you want to mess around with them, which I do highly suggest you do, you know exactly what you need to change and test out. Like I said earlier, all these settings should only result in about a 1-5% to FPS decrease in your other games depending on how strong your CPU is. Once you're done with that, click OK and it will apply the settings. And then finally, we've got a few more to go through. Under advanced, you're going to scroll down and you're going to see transmit buffers and receive buffers. Receive buffers must always be half the value of transmit buffers. Since I'm on an Intel driver, the max value for transmit is 2048, and the max value, like I said, since it has to be half for receive buffers, is going to be 1024. If your PC can't handle this, just go down halfway increments until it can. If you have a decent CPU, definitely put these on max, and if your CPU is slightly lacking, I definitely suggest trying it out, but maybe lowering it if you need to. Once you've gone ahead and done that, click OK, and you are done with all the advanced Ethernet adapter settings. Now let's get straight into part number three. This is where we're going to use the MSI mode tool. I have the download link in the description below. Once you go ahead and download it, you're going to right click it and run it as an administrator. Now if and only if your Ethernet connection adapter has MSI as one of its listed supported modes, then you can go ahead and click this checkbox. If you do not have MSI as a supported mode, do not click this checkbox. Since I have MSI as a supported mode, I'm going to go ahead and click the checkbox. And then another misconception that a lot of you may have, some of you may have your graphics card set to MSI mode, which is totally fine if that's best for your PC. But here over on interrupt priority, make sure every single thing is undefined. Your CPU, will interrupt everything in the most efficient route possible. If you have a priority changed from undefined, yes, it will prioritize that one thing, but it comes at the cost of every single other thing. Once you've gone ahead and done that, click apply, exit out, and let's move on to step number four. For optimization number four, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the registry and we're going to turn off network throttling. To do so, you're going to click Windows key and R at the same time, then type reg edit, R-E-G-E-D-I-T, and you should be greeted with a screen that looks something like this. Go ahead and make sure you click H key local machine, then double click software, then from here what you're going to do is you're going to type M, and then scroll down to Microsoft, then you're going to type W, and scroll down to Windows NT. Double click open that, click current version. And then from here, type M again and go to multimedia. Then click system profiling. And here on the right, you should see network throttling index. Your value might be a bunch of random things like FFFFF. Go ahead and double click network throttling index. Click on decimal down here and set your value data to 10 like mine is. Click OK and then you're good to go. And let's get straight into optimization number five. For optimization number five, you're going to go ahead and download the TCP optimizer. I'll go ahead and have the download link in the description below. Once you have this downloaded, right click it and run it as an administrator. Wait for it to load its settings. Once it's loaded, you're going to go ahead in the top right and click the MTU slash latency tab. And then you're going to click the largest MTU and click yes if it comes up for you. and it'll go ahead and it'll give you a number right here. Make sure you remember this number. You can now exit out of that application and then go down to the search bar and type CMD. Right click command prompt and run it as an administrator. Once you are here, you're gonna type what I type. N-E-T-S-H interface IPv4 show sub interface like so and then click enter. 
it's going to go ahead and show you a bunch of options. Since I have Wi-Fi disabled, it doesn't show me that. You might have more, you might have less than me. What we are looking for is the NIT labeled Ethernet. Yours might be labeled something different. What we are looking for is the name of your NIC. My NIC is Ethernet and yours is most likely Ethernet as well. Once you have figured out this name, you're going to go ahead and type in this command. NETSH interface IPv4 set sub interface. Then you're going to type the name of your NIC. Mine is Ethernet right here followed by MTU equals, and then here you're gonna go ahead and type that number that I told you to remember from the TCP optimizer program that we ran. Mine was 1500. Following this, you're gonna type store equals persistent, and you're gonna go ahead and click enter. Once you've done this, you can go ahead and exit out, then go ahead and restart your PC to make sure all your settings are applied. If this video helped you out and you want more like it, hit that like button and let me know in the comments. If enough people do so, I'll go ahead and make a bunch more videos like this. And with all that being said, don't forget to subscribe with notifications so you don't miss the next ones. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.